All right, you guys just in my arm. So here's a video. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, so sample standard deviation. You know that. That's S of X right here. Population mean, mu, right here. Remember, anything that's about the population, Greek letter. Population standard deviation. You know that guy. Sigma. Sample mean, X bar. Sample proportion, P hat. Population proportion. Now, I know you don't believe me, but this is actually a Greek letter. It's technically the Greek letter of rho, but again, don't worry about that. Just call it P. I'll take that. There you go. All right. Make sure you guys know your notations. Those are going to be pretty important tomorrow. All right. So these um, first two, I did go over these in class. However, I'll go ahead and do them again just because um, some of you might not have been in class. So here you go. In the United States, approximately 9% of the population is left-handed. That just told me P equals 0 0.09. In a simple random sample of 1,000 U.S. residents, 80 were found to be left-handed. So this is a sample. The sample proportion that was just told to us is 80 over 1,000, which is 0 0.08. What is the most likely explanation for the difference between the statistic, which is p hat, and the parameter, which is p? Why aren't these the same? Well, the reason that I go out and take a sample of the population and it doesn't give me exactly what the population says it should be is because of sampling variability. The central limit theorem is important in statistics because it allows us to use the normal distribution to find probabilities involving the sample mean, that's our x bars, if the sample size is reasonably large and is greater than or equal to 30, regardless of the shape of the population. That sounds really good. Let's just see why these other ones don't work. If the population is normally distributed, the thing about the central limit theorem says is that it does actually say that it is regardless of the shape of the population. So the population being normally distributed is not necessary. So that one's out. And for that same reason, C and D are out. All right, now, the central limit is, uh, theorem is important because it allows us to use the normal distribution if the population size is reasonably large. We don't have to know the population size. In fact, this, again, tells us regardless of the shape of the population, it's really regardless of the size either. The population size could be really small, like the size of a classroom. And so, for that reason, that one's out. So, A. All right, let's look at number nine. Number nine, following a recent dramatic drop of 500 points in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a poll conducted for the Associated Press found that 92% of those polled said that a year from now, their family financial situation would be as good as it is today or better. Which of the following terms describes the number 92%? So, the 92% is 92% of those polled. So, that implies that that's from the sample. This number, 92%, is a percent, which implies that this is a proportion problem. So, this is a sample proportion. When you guys see proportion, think percent, okay? Sample proportion. All right, let's look at number 10. Scores on the mathematics part of the SAT exam in a recent year were roughly normal with a mean of 515 and a standard deviation of 114. Now, just to be clear, that is the population value. So the population mean is 515. The population standard deviation is 114. Okay? And we know that it's roughly normal. If you choose a simple random sample of 100, so my N is 100, 
and average their SAT math scores. Suppose that you do this many, many times. You get lots of X bars out of this deal. All right, lots of samples of size 100, getting lots of averages of those samples. Which of the following describes the sampling distribution of X bar? Now, the sampling distribution of X bar has the following properties. It has a mean of X bar that equals the mean of the population. It has a standard deviation of X bar that equals the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. So let's just see what's going on here. We have a sampling distribution of a sample mean with n equals 100. That's a good thing. n equals 100. Ooh, n does not equal 515. That's the mean. So that one's out. So goodbye. All right, the mean of x bar equals the mean of the population, which is 515. So that one's good. That one's good. Okay. Standard deviation is either, is it 114 or is it 114 divided by the square root of 100? The 114 is the population standard deviation. But for our purposes, we're looking for the sample distribution of X bar. And so that would be this one right here. So the answer is B. All right, let's look at 11. The student newspaper at a large university asks a simple random sample of 250 undergraduates. Do you favor eliminating the carnival from the term and celebration? All in all, 150 of the 250 are in favor. Suppose that, unknown to you, 55% of all undergraduates favor eliminating the carnival. If you took a very large number of simple random samples of size n equals 250 from this population, the sampling distribution of the sample proportion p hat would be what? All right, so just to, again, go ahead and clarify, we're doing mean of p hat, which is going to be p. Standard deviation of p hat is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. Now, we are never going to get an exactly normal distribution, okay? I, it doesn't matter how hard you try. The real world does not look exactly normal, okay? So, we will get an approximately normal distribution most of the time, and so that's good. Now, whether or not it's heavily skewed will depend on if it passes the large count condition. n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10. So let's just check that. n is 250. p, the population proportion, is 0.55. So if I take 250 and multiply by 0.55, I end up with a really awesome number. I'm pretty sure it's bigger than uh, 10, but we'll just double check. We get 137.5. That's definitely bigger than 10. And then if we check the complement of that, then we get 112.5. That's also bigger than 10. So that tells me that it is, in fact, approximately normal and not heavily skewed. Okay. All right, now, is the mean of the sampling distribution going to be 0.55 or is it going to be 0.6? Well, the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat equals the population proportion, and that was told to us as 0.55. So there's that. It's not 0.6. We don't have to go on and do the standard deviation because we already know the answer to this problem, which is b. Also, all of the standard deviations are exactly the same. So we know it's 0.03. All right, let's look at 12. I'm going to erase this just so we can see 12. Okay. 
The Gallup poll has decided to increase the size of its random sample of voters from about 1,500 people to about 4,000 people right before an election. The poll is designed to estimate the proportion of voters who favor a new law banning smoking in public buildings. Which of the following best describes the effect of the, on the bias and the variability of the estimator with this new sample size? So we are increasing the sample size. Hi, ma'am. How are you? Hello. How are you? Yeah, got it, ma'am. <laughs> With those permission, but thank. Sorry about that. Increase sample size. Decrease variability. Okay. So, variability will increase. No, it won't. Variability will decrease. Okay. Variability will remain the same. No. No. Variability will decrease. So we're down to A or E. Okay, what about the bias? When I increase my sample size, it really doesn't affect the bias in any way. Think about if I were to go to the donut store, I know I used this example earlier today, but I'll use it again. If I go to the donut store tomorrow and I ask five people what they think about health food, that's a bias sample. I should not be at a donut store asked about health food. If I go the next day and I talk to 500 people, have I changed the bias? No, I'm still at a donut store asking about health food. So there's still a bias there. So changing the sample size does not change the bias. So the bias will remain the same. It will not increase. Next problem, number 13. The central limit theorem refers to which of the following characteristics of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So we're talking about the central limit theorem here. Regardless of the shape of the population's distribution, that's sounding good, the sampling distribution of the sample mean, that's x bar, from sufficiently large samples of n greater than or equal to 30, will be approximately normally distributed. That sounds perfect. That is exactly right. Why is it not one of the other ones? So it says here, regardless of the shape of the population's distribution, that's promising. Now it starts talking about the standard deviation of the sample distribution of sample means. Um, our central limit theorem is only, CLT is only about shape. It has nothing to do with why the standard deviation is what it is. Furthermore, look at part C. It's talking about regardless of the shape of population's distribution, the mean of the sampling distribution will be equal to the mean of the population. That's not the shape. So I'm not going to use that one either. Part D, as you take a larger and larger sample from a normally distributed population, the central limit theorem says it is regardless of population shape. So it doesn't have to be normal. And that's the same thing that is the problem in part D. All right, number 14. A recent study was conducted to investigate the duration of time required to complete a certain manual dexterity task. The reported mean was 10.2 seconds with a standard deviation of 16 seconds. Suppose the reported values are the true mean and standard deviation for the population of the, study, of the subjects in the study. If a random sample of 144 subjects is selected from the population, what is the approximate probability that the mean of the sample will be more than 11 seconds? All right, so this problem is asking us to find the probability that within a sample distribution of sample means that one of our samples has a mean bigger than 11 seconds. So. Hopefully, reading the problem, you were able to identify that this is not a proportion problem. This is a mean problem. We're talking about means and standard deviations. 
So the mean of the population was 10.2. The standard deviation of the population was 16. We took a sample size of 144. So what we need to do is we need to find the mean of X bar. Well, the mean of X bar is just the mean of the population, which is just 10.2. The standard deviation of X bar is going to be sigma, the standard deviation of the population, divided by the square root of the sample size. So that's 16 divided by the square root of 144. So when I plug that into my calculator, 16 divided by the square root of 144 is 1.3 repeating. So I need to make sure that this is approximately normal, a normal distribution. Well, my sample size is much bigger than 30. So um, n is 144, which is greater than or equal to 30. So CLT applies. Okay, so I have a normal distribution. Thank you, CLT. I have a mean of 10.2 and a standard deviation of 1.33. And we are looking for the probability that the mean of the sample will be more than 11 seconds. So we're looking for this. So we have here normal CDF. The lower boundary is 11. The upper boundary is infinity. The mean of the distribution of X bar is 10.2. The standard deviation of X bar is 1.3 repeating. So we'll plug that into our calculator. 11, 1E99, 10.2, 1.3, 1.3. Just throw a just throw a bunch of threes in there and enter. And you get something approximately around this. Okay. So that problem required you to go through, basically go through all the steps and um, find the probability just wasn't in a free response type problem. Okay. All right, let's look at number 15 now. Number 15. Scroll up here. Number 15. A sample survey interviews an SRS of 220 or 267 college women. Suppose that 70% of college women have been on a diet within the past 12 months. What is the probability that 75% or more of the women in the sample have been on a diet in the past 12 months? So this problem. We have percents, so we're talking about proportions. All right, so this is a proportion problem. We were given the proportion of the population that has been on a diet in the last uh, 12 months, and we have been given um, a probability to find. We need to find the probability that p hat is greater than or equal to 0.75. We were also given n, which was 267. So we're just going to follow all of our steps. The mean of p hat is just the population value, which is 0.7. The standard deviation is the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. So that's going to be the square root of 0.7 times 0.3 divided by 267. When you simplify that, you get 0.028. All right, we, um, we can check and make sure that this distribution of sample proportions is going to be approximately normal using the large count condition. And so we need to make sure n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. So we have 267 times 0.7. And that is 187. That is greater than or equal to 10, so that one's good. And now we'll check the other one, 267 times 0 0.3. 267 times 0 0.3 is about 80, and that is also greater than or equal to 10. So we have a normal distribution full of p hats. 
we've got our mean of 0.7, and we are looking for the probability that when we take another sample, that they have a sample proportion greater than or equal to 0.75. Just like most other things, this is just a normal CDF problem. Uh, the lower boundary is 0.75. The upper boundary is infinity. The mean of the distribution of P hat is 0.7. And the standard deviation of P hat that we found was 0 0.028. When you do all of these calculations, you plug this into second vars in your calculator, and you come up with 0 0.037. All right, two more. Number 16. Of the roughly 40,000 high school students in the United Kingdom, 22% state that Dobie is their favorite Harry Potter character. Suppose you contact a simple random sample of 150 students in the UK and ask them whether Dobie is their favorite character. Now this problem is a little bit different because it actually gives us the sample size. I'm sorry, the population size. The population size here is 40,000. There's 40,000 high school students in the UK. It also tells us the population proportion, which is 22%, and we have our sample size. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of P hat, the proportion of students who favor Doby out of the SRS of 150? Well, that just equals P, which was given to us in the problem. What is the standard deviation of P hat? Well, we're gonna check the square root of P times one minus P divided by N, Basically, guys, this is the same problem we just did with different numbers, and it actually is guiding you through the process. So this one should actually feel a little bit easier. So this is the square root of 0.22 times 0.78 divided by 150. Okay, so we'll find that out. The square root of... 0.22 divided by 0 0.78, or 0 0.22 times 0.78, whew, divided by 150, that is 0 0.0338. Now this does ask us to make sure we check that 10% condition. 10 times the sample size has to be less than the population size. 10 times 150, which is 1,500, has to be less than the population size, which was given to us this time, which is 40,000 high school students in the UK. Okay. All right, the next question is asking us to check that, uh, check that you can use a normal approximation for the sampling distribution. Since this is a proportion problem, we're gonna check n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10 and n times one minus p has to be greater than or equal to 10. We're gonna make sure both of those things are true. So n is 150, p is 0 0.22. 150 times 0 0.22 is 33. That is greater than or equal to 10. And we're going to check that 150 times 0.78 is also greater than or equal to 10. So 150 times 0.78, that is 117, and that is for sure bigger than 10. So we have all of the qualifications that we need in order to find whatever probability we need to do. So we know that it's a normal distribution, we know the mean, and we know the standard deviation. So let's find out what we got to what we got to answer. What is the probability that less than 20% of a simple random sample of 150 students state that Dobie is their favorite character? So this is the probability that an additional sample of P hat is less than 0.2. We know that we have a normal distribution. We know the mean is 0.22. 
we know the standard deviation of this distribution is 0 0.0338. All of that is from above, from the, pro part, from the problem above, the parts of the problem above. There we go. Ooh. And then we're going to find 0.2, and we're going to go less than that. Normal CDF. The lower boundary here is negative infinity. The upper boundary is 0.2. The mean of this distribution is 0.22. And the standard deviation of this distribution is 0.0338. Okay, so we'll plug all that in. we get 0.277. So that is the chance that when I take another random sample of 150 of these high school students in the United Kingdom out of that same population, there's a 27.7% chance that my sample would be less than 0.2 just by sampling variability. All right, and the last problem is number 17. The weight of the eggs produced by a hen is normally distributed with a mean of 65 grams and standard deviation of 5 grams. So this tells us that the population for a particular hen that produces eggs has a mean of 65 and a standard deviation of 5. What is the mean of the sampling distribution of X bar, the mean weight of 12 randomly selected eggs? So there's our sample size. So the mean of X bar is the mean of the population, which is just 65. The standard deviation of X bar, standard deviation of the population, divided by the square root of the sample size. That's 5 divided by the square root of 12. That's 1.44. We're going to verify that 10% condition. 10 times n is less than the population. 10 times 12 is 120. Now, is that less than the population of all eggs produced by this hen? Well, that's a really great question. Um, I wonder how many eggs are produced by a hen. Hmm. Let's see here. Um, after some thorough research, I have found that the population of all eggs produced by most hens is about 530 eggs. So I think we're okay. <laughs> Ooh, that was some hard information to find, but I found it. All right, can you use the normal approximation? So, look right here. Population is approximately normal. Therefore, your sampling distribution of X bar is also approximately normal. So that is good news. Everything is ready to go. We have a normal distribution. We know the mean. We know the standard deviation. We just have to find the probability. So let's do that and then we're done. Calculate the probability that the mean weight of 12 eggs, that's a sample x bar, is between 62.5 and 68.7. So actually, we're gonna have to write it this way. 62.5, X bar, 68.75. We have our normal distribution. 65 is our mean. Our standard deviation is 1.44. And we're going from 62.5 to 68.75, and we're finding that area of the distribution. Normal CDF, lower boundary, 
62.5. Upper boundary, 68.75. Mean of the distribution is 65. Standard deviation is 1.44. Plug all that into your calculator. 0.954. All right, that's it. Good luck.